If you enjoy learning the Cherokee language with RSU TV, join our Signal Society. Your monthly gift of $10 a month ensures that RSU TV can continue to produce programs like the Cherokee language classes. Click the link in the description or call 1-800-823-7210 to join today. Oceani God, um Galiele Jigedo Kohi uh Wave Levens Dawado, uh Zalagi Yetli Dagila Ston Eho. Um we're uh, really happy that you're here today. Welcome to Cherokee Two here at RSU TV and Cherokee Nation. Um we're so happy that you've chosen to tune in today and um uh, Hopefully we're going to get a lot done. So um, as always, uh, we will do our, our Bible reading for today uh, as a reading exercise. Um, we will do our conversational Cherokee, and then we will continue on with our story. Kohig Josko Chaneli in Ejalagia de Lo Coasti. Today is our 38th. Cherokee lesson. So we only have about 10 left and we still have quite a bit of our story left to talk about. So um, we'll try to uh, get as far as we can, but I, I don't think we're going to get the f story finished uh, by the end of the course, but we'll get as far as we can. And just remember, um, if there's something that I, you feel like I've gone too fast for you or anything like that, you can always rewind it, watch it as much as you like. Um, and that's the nice thing about having these things recorded. So come, Idalena, Talagi, Idiwani. All right, so our reading today, let's look through it. And so let's just take, let me go ahead and change this to a, my little red dot. And so we'll go through and we'll look at the syllabary characters because as we've talked about before, and if you want to improve your reading comprehension in Cherokee, you just have to do it. Um, I'm, I'm just as guilty as everyone else. I get lazy. I don't like to read in Cherokee because it requires more brain power for me. But um, I keep trying to challenge myself to take time to read in Cherokee um, and so I encourage you to do the same. Uh, you can go back through, if you have a copy of, of the Cherokee Bible, um, that's a really wonderful resource. It's, of course, it's the largest body of uh, written work that we have in our language. Uh, so it's always a great place. There's now one that has, um, on one side of the page, it has it in Cherokee. On the other side of the page, it has it in English. So you can kind of compare verses. That's really a great strategy to use. Um, and so also there is an online project. Uh, I think it's uh, an independent project, but you can, if you look for a uh, Cherokee Bible or something like that online, I'm sure that you can access it. And the nice thing about it is it has it in syllabary, then it has it in phonetics, and then it has the English translation. So that's um, really a nice resource to have if you're uh, a computer type person. Um, but if you're not, of course, the, the, you can't beat the, the good old um, paper and ink. Um, yeah, um, you know. Um, so let's go through and let's look at our reading for today. Um, I think this one will be fairly easy for us. So it comes from, let's read it slow. Ma ga u wo hui la na hi su so ne li ne a ya to kl. Tal skon gal guo gine u dal ga. Okay, so um, ma ga mark u wo hui la ne hi the writings. So the writings of Mark um, so ne li ne ninth aya to chapter tal skon. Galgogine, twenty seventh Udalka, chap uh, verse. Okay, Udalka means verse. All right. 
So hopefully you were able to read through that, but let's read through it together, um, the heading. So, ma ga u wo hui la ne hi so ne li ne a ya to tla ta skon ga gu gi ne u dal ga. All right. So, um, and then the verse is, uh, again, I'll read it slow, we'll talk about it, and then we'll read it a couple more times, okay? So, uh, it says, A, Se, No, G, Sa, U, Wo, Ya, Ne, Sa, Du, Le, Ta, Ne, I, a le, du le, ne, i. Okay, so not a lot of words in it. That's nice. <laughs> and the words aren't too long, so we like that. So a se no means but. Okay, g sa, g sa. Um, can, you, um, can you tell me what you think g sa might mean? Of course, that's the name of Jesus. Um, and then this next word, this is a word that you may have heard um, part of it, okay? It says, u wo ya ne sa, u wo ya ne sa, okay? Um, if you think of the word u wo yin, u wo yin is his hand, okay? Ju wo yin, his hands, plural, okay? If you look at this, we have u wo ya, u wo ya ne sa. So that's, he took him by the hand. He took his hand, okay? U wo ya ne sa, okay? Du le ta, du le ta ne hi, du le ta ne hi, du le ta ne hi means he, um, he lifted him up, all right? A le and du le ne hi, okay? Du le ne, he, he rose, he, he was lifted. Okay, so um, you can see that these two words, du le tane and du le ne, they're very similar because they come from the same root to be lifted up. But in the first case, du le tane, okay, du le tane means he did it to somebody else. And then du le ne, he did it himself, okay? So he lifted somebody up and then he was lifted. So let's read it through at a medium speed uh, and then we'll read it a little bit faster. So it says, A se no ji sa u wo ya ne sa du le ta ne i a le du le ne i. Okay? Um, usually in conversational Cherokee, these e at the end of those two words, a lot of times you, they would you leave them off, uh, except for a lot of times like you're really, really um, traditional speakers, you're really kind of formal speakers, um, and, our, and our older speakers might leave them in. But um, in conversational Cherokee, a lot of times, instead of saying like, du le tane, they would just say, du le tane. And it's the same word. Um, so if you hear the E, that's fine, but you might hear it without that. So, and then of course the English says, but Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. So we did a pretty good job translating that. Um, uh, it says pretty much in Cherokee, the exact same thing that it, it says in English. So um, that's always a good thing. All right, so uh, let's read it one more time and then we'll go through to our conversational Cherokee. So, A se no ji sa u wo ya ne sa du le ta ne i a le du le ta du le ne. All right, so um, short, sweet, um, and a really good one for um, you to practice your reading and to practice your uh, comprehension as well. All right, so let's go to our conversation. Um, so we learned 
um, uh, this kind of, this part actually came about um, from my daughter and the kinds of Cherokee that I use with my daughter on a daily basis. You know, things like get up, brush your hair, put clothes on, you know. Um, and so this one uh, is related to one that we've learned before, tala su tala su tala put your shoes on. So I tell her that um, pretty much 10 times a day. Um, <laughs> because she likes to be barefoot, so um, so talasu tlagan, put your shoes on. Nudale talasu tlagan, change your shoes. Nudale means other or the other ones. So nudale talasu tlagan, put your other shoes on. Now this one is related to that. This says yi de gala su tlagan, yi de gala su tlagan. That means I'm going to put your shoes on, okay? So if you have younger ones um, that, you know, uh, struggle with putting, your putting their own shoes on, then you can use this word. You say, And you hear that, It's just the same as, right? Okay, that g means I to you. Remember, like the word g ge you or um, g sta wa du ga, you know, I'll follow you, right? Um, so, yi de, that de, make, means they're putting more than one shoe on, okay? Yi de g la su tle ga, okay? So, I to you putting shoes on, okay? And the yi, in this case, just kind of makes it a little less, um, it makes it more like, if I could do this for you, okay? <laughs> it's, it's a little less forceful, it's a little more polite in, in, in language, yi de ga la su te ga, okay? Yi de ga la su tle ga. Yi de ga la su tle ga. I'm going to put your shoes on. Okay, so this is a really good one for those of you that have um, little ones or you have grandchildren, nieces and nephews that are not yet um, old enough to put their shoes on. You can start with babies and start using this conversation. And so every time you put your shoes on or you put their shoes on them, yi de ga la su tle ga. I'm going to put your shoes on. And the more they hear that, the more it just becomes second nature. That's how it is with my daughter because she's been hearing it all of her life. So talasu tlaga. So she knows what um, what that word means, uh, even though she uh, usually answers me in English. Um, I'm at least happy that she comprehends, and that's the first step. Comprehension always precedes production, and reading always precedes writing. Okay, that's, that's how our brains work, and um, so we want to work with our brain rather than against it. All right, so um, we're going to uh, go on to our story. I'm going to back up a little bit. I'm going to read some of the story that we've already done and pick out a few words, and then we're going to move forward, okay? So... Uh, again, we've done it all in syllabary to give us some practice, to, to force ourselves to use our language uh, as much as we can. So, come, Idalena. Uli heli jona ge sa tskili. So, Uli heli jona, happy, ge sa was tskili, the witch. So, Uli heli jona ge sa tskili. Yawi. Do he sti ulunkte? Okay, young we people or person. Do he sti to kill ulunkte? She liked, so she liked killing people. Young we do he sti ulunkte? Okay, so hopefully this is not a sentence that you hear a lot in Cherokee, but um, if you ever do, you'll know what it means now. Tla uh, yunt. Na oskaya uga we you uwej gesa. Okay, tla not yunt did not know. She did not know. Na the oskai the man 
Ugonwiyu Uwej Gesa was a prince, right? Ugonwiyu, the chief or the ruler, Uwej, his child, which is the only way that we can describe what a prince is, is the child of a chief or the child of a ruler. Um, so uh, we don't uh, have a, a fancy one word name for that. So, Klayunt na askai Ugonwiyu Uwej Gesa. Okay. So I'm going to give you three tasks, okay, for you to do, okay? I'm giving you three things to do. Okay. Okay. If you do them all, okay, if you finish, he de squat means to finish. Um, if you finish them all or you complete them, um, I will give you my daughter, okay? I'll give her, uh, my child, female. So my female child, I will give to you. Udane um, Ashkili said the witch. Kato usti chaduli akuyi awadanti. Okay, what do you want me to do? Utadane uganwiyu uweji. Ask the prince. All right. Um, Al Yesu sto jagiyohu sela, jagiyohu sela. I um, the the ring that I lost, okay? Hui ya amo ame guoni. Go get it from the ocean. Hui ya, go get it. Hui ya, okay? Um, we learned that there are several ways to say go get something depending on what the item is. Remember, hui ya is to go get something solid. Hui niki, go get something that's flexible, right? So, huiya ame guoni. Go get it from the ocean. Udane skili, said the witch. Ugonwiyu uwej, uwenusa, unisteliski dine doha. So, the, the prince went to where his helpers were. We do no sela. He told him. He ita akayi. Nagwadanti pla ahid yiki. So he done this agayi nagwadanti. This first task pla ahid yiki is not easy. So this uh, phrase pla ahid yiki is a really uh, easy or is a really good phrase for you to learn. Pla ahid yiki. It's not easy. Okay. Or you can say ahid done. It's easy. Okay, susto hawin amegwo. So the ring that's under the ocean, dijia wagwe wagwu testi. He went to go get it. Okay, eli wush yiga stela. Okay, I've, I've got to go get that ring from under the ocean. Eli yigstela. Can you help? Okay, Eli yigstela. No leno then na askai osta agotiska he anuwe say. So the the man that had good eyesight said this. Um, Yiwagi gu dun. He's like, I'll, I'll, hawin a mo wuk tane. So um, he's like, he looked under the, the water. U na go stai nei at al yesusto. So, uh, and there on a sharp rock was sitting the ring. Inikad askai. Um, dun, dunawi, uh, dunawi, dunhe, 
Um, the tall man carried Aniskai, um, the, the men toward the ocean. He anu we say, he said this, Ahidita, we just talked about that. Uh, Ahidita, it's easy. Yiki, it would be easy. Um, Wawu testi, to, to go get it. It would be easy to go get it. Yijikoti, um, if I could see. Okay, yijikoti, if I could see. Skiwus, is that it? Um, Again, that's a good, uh, that's a, a phrase that you'll hear a lot if you're a round speaker. Skiwus, is that all? Eli udan yigastela. I can help you. Udane galjohit askaya, said the fat man, galjohit. Um, for some reason, the word galjohit is an easy word to remember. People usually learn that word really, really quick. So, um, uh, then it goes on and it says, um, Okay, so he, uh, he opened his mouth. All of the water, or uh, all of the ocean, uh, he drank. Uh, he drank it all up. Um, he drank, drank all of it up. Ukayo uh, sohna, until it was dry. Ukayo sohna, until it became dry. Tsti, ni, or du ni, du ni tlune, oh yeah. Sti du ni tlune in ikad askai nole al ye susto. Um, so he, the tall man knelt down a little bit and he picked up the ring. Um, so the, the prince um, took her, her ring. He us, Jaye Susto, is this your ring? Jaye Susto. Your ring, um, that jaw lets us know that he's asking if it's hers. So he he is Jael Susto utadane skili. He he asked the witch. Uh, awajeli dun. Yeah, it's mine. He um, squadi dun. You you completed akayi nijatanti gesa. He, you completed the first task. Ahanda tatline ni jadanti. Here is your second task. Tatline ni jadanti. Here's your second task. Tloges joitsku waka deji na tla. So out in the, the field, tloges, we learned that word, tloges. Um, Jong it school, 300 waka cows, deji notla, I own. So out in the field, I own 300 cows. Ale uni squando go, uni squango toti, uni squango toti. Remember that's some place where things are saved. Uh, in this case, it's the word for a seller. We just know that because we know the story. Um, but it's really just some place where things are saved, okay? Unisquan go toti, unisquan go toti. So the place where things are saved. Joitsku, 300. Jusadon, barrels. Remember the word jusadon means they're hollow. And that can also be the word, like if you say usadon dawol, that's the hollow mushroom. And that's the word for morel. So jusadon is a barrel, as they're hollow inside. Atu uh, gist, alcohol, right? Da uh, least, full. Da uh, gine, I have. So she's telling him, she's like, I have 300 cows out in the field, and I have 300 barrels of alcohol. 
Okay, do not lie. Uh, do not lie. Uh, do no say la. So she told her servants, do not lie. That means the ones that she owns. Okay, and we talked about that word um, about ownership of, of living things. So, jo it school. Um, di na li jo heed. Um, di na li jo he di. Wa ka. Um, oh, dinal jo hit. <laughs> dinal jo hit. Uh, jo hit school. Dinal jo hit. Waka. So, 300 fat cows. Dinal jo hit. See, sometimes we have to read through there and we have to like change the sounds just a little bit before they make sense. And um, if you're around speakers who are reading, they have to do the same thing if it's not a text that. Um, they're really, really um, familiar with. Um, and, and that's, to me anyway, that's one of our limitations um, with our writing system is um, that it makes it difficult to read just cold. But the more we do it, the more, just like in English, you know, the English writing system is not a, um, is not a practical writing system either. But the way that we can read with fluency is because we do it a lot. And this is the way that we will get more fluent um, reading in Cherokee is we just have to do it. So, um, and then we, after a while, we just get to where we can read. Um, we talked about how Miss Peggy, how her mother can read the book. Uh, she can read the Bible just as easily as, as you or I can read a book in English, you know, and it's because her mother has spent so much time doing it that she just knows what those words are. She can recognize them just by looking at them. Okay, jo it sku dinal jo hit waka de jina tla un. We tli yana, we tli yana, tlo ge sa. So go get the 300 fat cows that I have out in the field. No le, then uni squan go toti. Go to the cellar. Huena. Uh, Huena means go there. Joy it school. Jusaton. A tu geest. Da tlista. Huitinegi. So, and go get those 300 barrels of, uh, full of alcohol. All right? So that's what she's asking. De De ja hi yesti, de ja hi yesti, jo it school. Dina li jo, oh, dina jo hit waka, ganeg, uwu ya tana, di coal, di hi, oh, di hi, di hiona, negada, di hiona. Okay, so. Uh, de jahi ye, uh, de, de jahi ye esti. Um, eat it, eat them. Jo it sku, um, de jina, um, dinal jo hit waka. Eat those 300 cows, eat the 300 cows. Uh, ganeg, the skin, uh, uwu ya tana, the hair, uh, di kol, the bones, di hion, the horns, nekata, everything. So he's saying, so she's basically telling him, I want you to eat those 300 uh, fat cows, um, hair, bone, skin, horns, and all. Ale, jo itsku, atu gist, disadon. Now, this is another way of saying hollow. You, we learned ju sedon, di sedon, means exactly the same thing. It's just a kind of a dialect thing. Ale joy it sku, a tu gist, di sedon, da tlista. So the 300 barrels uh, full of, of alcohol. Di ja di tosti, drink them. A go sele, a she told the man. 
Sawu Gil Ijan Wa Dunha Ale Sagu A Tu Gist Uje Woja Uje Woja E G Goha Tio Hu Si Dun. All right. So this is a long sentence, but it says, if only, if even one hair, okay, sawu git, this is not git as in dog, this is git as in a hair. Okay, sawu git, one hair. Ijana wa dehe, left, ale sawu, atu gist, uje wo even one drop of alcohol, Ijiko, um, huh? Is left. Tiyohu uh, sita, you're gonna die. Tiyohu <laughs> sita means you're, you're, you will die. So, hawa, okay. Udane uga we uwe said the prince. This this prince is a pretty brave guy. He, she tells him all this, and he's like, yeah, okay, whatever. So, kla ost yige son. Um, it's it's never good, al staiti to to eat. It's never good to eat food. Kilo uh, yogin uh, yogin go sana yigi without being with somebody else. So he's like, it's never basically he's saying it's never good to eat alone, right? Ashkili uyeza the witch laughed uyeza. The, list, the witch laughed. Sagu Yomi, one person. Yi Hui Yani, you can bring one person. Okay. Unskiwu Skina Iga, but no one else. Unskiwu Skin Iga, no one else. So you can only bring one person with you. Ane do hantid uwena sa uga wi uwage. So um, the prince went to where they were at, uh, meaning his helpers. Um, that's implied in the sentence. Wu no sele, he told them, he went and told them, uh, galjo he askaya, he went and told the fat man, kohi um, iga. Today, kohig, okay. Normally in conversation, no Cherokee, you just hear them say kohig, but you can sometimes hear them say kohiga. Today, we danali stayena, okay. We danal stayena. We're gonna go eat, okay. We danal stayena. So we're gonna go eat today. Now. We are at the new part, finally. Okay, so that's as far as we've gotten so far. Now we're going to get to the new part. And so we're going to do that um, in phonetics first. So, gal jo hit. Hopefully by this time you know that word. Gal jo hit. Fat. Oskaya. Man. Du dane sohna. Okay. Du dane sohna. Nigad. Jo it sku waka du ge du ge ganeg uya tana di kol di hion ni god usane. Okay? So, gal jo hit askaya, the fat man. Do dane sonna, do dane sonna. He stretched himself. Do dane sonna. He stretched himself out. Niga joitsku waka do ge. All. Niga. Niga joitsku. All 300. Waka. Cows. Do ge. He ate them. So <laughs> he ate all 300 cows. Ganeg. Skin, uwu ya tana, hair, di kol, bones, di hon, horns, 
Nigod Usane. He finished all of it. Okay, all of it was gone. Let's go back. Let's read through that one more time. Gal Johit Askaya do da do so na Nigod Johit Sku Waka do Gan Ganeg Uwu Yatana di Kol di Hion Nigod Usane. Okay, so all of that we've had before, um, for the most part. Um, most of those words we've had in one form or, or, in, or another, all right? So let's go to the next one. It says, Kla skin sawu git utiyae. Utiyae. Okay, kla skin. Not even. Kla skin. Sawu. One geet, not one dog, but one hair. Okay, so be aware that geet and geet, same word. <laughs> dog and hair sound the same. Sawu geet uti ya'e. Not even a single hair was left. Okay, klaskin sawu geet uti ya'e. Next one says no le. Joint school Sedoni Da Tlista A Tu Gist Du Di Tahe. Okay, most of these words I think we can figure out. Nole, Nole. That's a really common, we've talked about this word. Some speakers use it almost every other sentence, some speakers never use it. And it just means next. Or and then, okay, no le. So um, we're just uh, we, what it does is it takes two sentences and it kind of tags them together and it just says, well, I'm continuing on with the same kind of thought, but it is a different sentence, okay? No le jo e school three hundred jo e school jo e three and then school he school is one hundred. So you mash those together and you get jo e school three hundred. Sedone barrels. Okay, we learned di sedone, ju sedone. Okay, joy it's ku sedone dot lista. Dot lista means something's filled up. A tu geest, a tu geest is alcohol. Um, some communities use this word a tu geest to refer to certain types of alcohol. Um, but um, it can mean any kind of alcoholic drink, any kind of drink that, that can make you drunk, okay? Du di tahe, he drank them. Du di tahe, okay? We learn, remember the word adi tost. Um, adi tost is something to drink. Du di tahe, du di tahe. You can see how those two words are related. There's that. D ta, right? D ta. And that's the drink part. Du D ta he. He drank them. No le joy tsku sedoni da tlis da a tu gis du D ta he. So, and next, he drank the 300 barrels full of alcohol. Okay. Kla uli squit you. Okay, um, hopefully you recognize the word tla, not. This word uli squit, uli squit, um, is, uh, means a cup, but specifically it means a cup with a handle. Okay, this, this uli squit refers to the handle part because it looks like an ear. Um, Ulisquit, and and so Ulisquit is a cup, but it's a cup with a handle. Tla Ulisquit you tanhe. Okay, so he didn't use a cup. All right, he drank all three hundred barrels of alcohol and did not use one cup. All right, Tla Ulisquit you tanhe. Okay. Onni. A tu gist de gayes hatta du gan Okay, 
This is a this is kind of a funny sentence to me. Ohni. Ohni means can mean behind or it can mean the last. Okay, the last. Ohni a tu gist. Um, the last of the alcohol. Okay. Ohni a tu gist. The last of the alcohol. Degaye satta. Degaye satta. That's your fingers. Okay, or his fingers in this case. Degaye satta. Du gana de e. Du gana de e. He licked. Okay. So can you put that? We have the word last. We have the word alcohol, we have the word fingers, and we have the word he licked them, okay? So how would we put that into a sentence that makes sense to us in English? Probably we would say he licked the last of the alcohol from his fingers, okay? Let's see, let's see how close we were, all right? Oh, hey, we're really close, <laughs> like right on. Okay, only a tu gis de gaye satin du gana de in. Okay, um, you might know, well, you may not, but the word tongue is gang kong. Okay, um, so du gana de in, du gana de in. So you can see how those maybe words are related because, of course, when you lick something, you lick it with your tongue, right? Okay, so that's as far as we're going to go today. So we, we did five sentences, but it's, they're five sentences that are full. And so let's go back through, let's read them in their phonetics. And that way, when we go back to the, the syllabary, we're able to read them easier, okay? Um, because we've already kind of learned the words as they are. And this is how little kids are. When I read to my um, when, when I read to my daughter, um, I a lot of times I'll read it to her uh, first, and then I'll have her read it. And by doing that, she kind of already knows what words are in the story, and she knows what to expect. And so then she's easier able to recognize which letters go with which words. And so this is a really good reading strategy that you can use for Cherokee, and it's also a good reading strategy you can use uh, for English as well. So, um, so, uh, so that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to read it back through using the phonetics, then we're going to read it in our bulleted list, okay? So it says, Gal johe oskaya du na de sonna Nika joitsku waka du ge ganeg uwu yatana di kol di hyon nika u sane tla skin sawu git u ti ya e no le joitsku sedon Tlista a tu gist du di tahe. Tla u li squit u tane. Ohni a tu gist de gaye satta du gan na de. All right, so we just read it in phonetics. Now let's see if we can do it in. Syllabary. So, gal jo hit askaya du dane sona. Okay. Ni ga da jo it sku wa ga du ge ga neg u wu ya tana. Di kol, di hyon, ni gada u sane. Tla skin sagu git u ti ya e. No le, jo it sku sedoni 
da pleased a tu geest du di ta he du di ta he pla u li squid u li squid um you wa tan you tan he you tan he on ni a tu geest de ga ye sa ta du gan du gan na da e okay so again i'm glad we we did it through with phonetics first because there are a lot of ways that we could say some of these words but knowing what the words are ahead of time helps us for example um uh this word here, jong e g sku, okay. If I were to just read that and say jong e g sku, I'd be like, I have no idea what that means because it doesn't make sense to me. But because I know it's jong e sku, jong e sku three hundred. So sometimes um, speakers will struggle like that, you know, because we have to change the words we have to change the sounds if it's a word we're not familiar with we have to change how it you know how it sounds to us because there's no formal way of spelling a word so i will spell a word the way it sounds to me miss peggy or miss kathy will spell a word the way it sounds to them and so then we're left with trying to decode what's on their page you know and so sometimes it can be very difficult if you remember in Cherokee 1 when we went through the Cherokee singing book um, it was very very hard because it was written by somebody who lived 150 years ago and we don't have them there to ask them can you read this aloud to me we're just having to figure out through their writing what they were meaning so give yourself time and um, I think personally, um, sometime in the future, we will probably have to be like other world languages and we will have to uh, establish some kind of, of formalized spelling for things. Um, and um, because uh, as we revitalize the language and as we um, have more and more things written down, we're going to have to have kind of a codified spelling for, uh, for words. Um, but this is a natural process. English, there used to be no standardized spelling in English, and people used to spell just however it sounded to them, and that was perfectly fine. Um, if you look at things written back in the 1700s or, or 1600s or even the 1800s, um, there were a lot of variations in spelling. And, um, but now, um, We've, we've established standardized spellings for words. And, and I think probably in Cherokee, if we hope to revitalize the language, uh, especially the written form, we're going to have to do some kind of standardization um, in some way. But I don't know what that's going to look like because we have to take into account uh, dialectical differences. So um, that's going to make it very, very interesting, I think. But um, hopefully you've enjoyed today's lesson. Um, this is all we're going to do today. When we come back next time, uh, we're going to continue on with the story and we're going to talk about, of course, what we talked about today because the more we go over it, the more easy or the easier it's going to be for you to um, cipher it all out and it's just going to be second nature to you. Uh, I want to encourage you, you can do it. Um, if I can do it, I know you can do it. So from all of us here at Cherokee Nation and RSU TV, I just want to say what don't and um, do the doggone, huh? Eh?